Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to the EMA account management What's New webinar. Uh, before we start, uh, please note that this session will be recorded and will be made available on uh, the EMA YouTube channel. Uh, for the session, we'll be using Slido for uh, question and answer. There is a chat in WebEx, but please note that that is not monitored. Uh, you can remain anonymous in Slido, or you can put your name. It's up to you. And if you are using Slido, uh, please check uh, the data privacy statement and accept it. So in terms of Q&A, we'll do our best to answer all your questions. But if we don't have an answer right away, we will uh, reach the colleagues that can answer for your question, and we will provide them the answer in writing. The list of uh, Q&A that will be answered in writing and that we are not able to answer during the meeting will be published as an annex of the presentation. Uh, there also will be the case where we don't have an answer at all. and in case of questions that are related to issues, specific issues, please uh, use the service desk platform because those will not be answered. I will be turning off my camera now just to make sure that the quality is okay. So after the meeting, we will publish this presentation on the events page of the EMA website, and the recording will be published both on our YouTube channel and on our event web page. And we'll start now with the webinar. So my name is Carlo De Vittoria. I am the Identity and Access Management Product Owner at EMA. Uh, Johnny Oliveira is supporting me as platform manager. And welcome to the EMA account management what's new webinar. First of all, I would like to welcome everybody. And um, uh, what we are going to do is we are going to have a brief overview of the features that the platform is offering, but then we will mainly focusing on what's new. So the latest features that were released on the platform and the ones that are coming really soon. Uh, during the session, we will have time for Q and A. We'll have a break at the half of the session, and then we will have another uh, session for Q and A at the end. So what we want you to take away from this section is to have an understanding on how EMA account management works. Uh, we mainly want to show you the new functionalities that uh, are coming to the platform or the ones that have been improved. And with that, we want to provide some tips and tricks on how to use the platform. So what is EMA account management? If you are participating to this webinar, probably you already know, you already use the platform or you are willing to use it. Uh, the EM account management is the platform that is allowing you to request access to all email services. And our vision is to make it secure and user-friendly at the same time. So we want really to make a platform that can fit your requirement, but at the same time remains as secure as we can. So what can you do with the EM account management? First of all, you can get an EMA account. So if you want to use EMA services, uh, you need to get an EMA account. And you can do this uh, using the self-registration. The self-registration allows you to create an account. You just need to provide your name, surname, and email address. And then you will be able to access EMA services. Some EMA services like uh, the service test platform uh, are granted by default. For others, you will need to request access. After you get an account, you can check your details. You can recover your username and password, and your account is retained as soon as you use it. So if you don't use it for six months, then your account will get disabled, and after further six months will be deleted. So after you get an EMA account, you can get access. 
and you can get access as an individual user, but mainly you can get access on behalf of an organization. And the system that is managing the organization in the EMA is OMS, our organization management system that is part of the sport portal. So before getting access, we need to make sure that your organization is listed in OMS. If you are using for the first time the portal for your organization, you need to request access as a user administrator or super user for some systems. So only after a user administrator is appointed, you will be able to request further access. And then as a user administrator, you will be able also to approve all the other users of your organization and to list and remove access of all the users of organization. So you will be responsible and accountable for the users that are accessing the data of your own organization. Each user can access multiple organizations and there is no restriction in the number of super user or user administrator that an organization can have. So after you are able to get access to one of the EMS systems, you can consume them. And the first step to access these services is, of course, logging into these systems. And more and more, we will see during the presentation, uh, we are relying on modern authentication. So you can set up your multi-factor authentication. You can uh, add methods, remove methods, and you can log out from EMS system. So these are all the features that we offer across the IAM landscape and specifically from EMA account management. As we said, uh, the focus of this webinar is on what's new. So what are the features that have been introduced in the system recently? And regarding the EMA account, the first feature that we introduce is the self-service account termination. So if you don't need your account anymore, you can terminate your account. We also worked in making the integration with the OMS more robust and to showing you the right information. So we added the, the organization shopping cart, the notification of organization merges, the possibility to select historical records, and we also displaying the status of a location. So if a location is inactive. In terms of using the EMA systems, we have more and more systems using modern authentication and more will be transferred to this authentication method. And then we have introduced email authentication. And this is one of the big things that will happen in the next quarter. But let's see these thing, functionalities one by one. So let's start with the self-service account termination. So if you need to terminate your account, as someone would say, we are sorry to see that you are leaving us, but it's fair that you are able to terminate your own account. And when do you need to terminate your account? There are several use cases. The main one is that if you are leaving your company or your organization, so you will not need to interact anymore on behalf of that specific company from the, for the MEA. Another use case could be that even if you are staying in your company, you are changing your role, your job, and you don't need to interact anymore with the EMA. So previously you had to request the service test to terminate your account or uh, a user administrator had to request for you to terminate your account. Uh, but now you can do it directly in the platform. So if you go under the manage identity menu, you will see a new option that is terminate account and then a form will allow you to complete this action. Please be aware that as soon as you confirm that you want to do this action, all the accounts will be deleted and all the access will be removed. So uh, to reinstate your account, then you will need to uh, re-register and re-request the access. This functionality has been released yesterday in the production environment and can be already used. So let's see it live. So now I am in our test environment and I using uh, a user that is called disabled user. And this user really wants to leave the EMA, so he will not 
access anymore. As we said, under the manage identity, we have the terminate account option. So if I click confirm, nothing is happening yet because of course I need to tick the user agreement. And as we said, this is important because you need to understand that after this process, you will not have the access to the EMA systems anymore. If I confirm this, the system is creating the request to delete my accounts, and that's it. I can log out from the platform, and then I will not have access anymore. Let's continue, and let's go to the get access part. So we already assume that you have your organization registered in OMS, and you want to request access on behalf of an organization. Uh, we know that many companies are spread across Europe, so they have different legal entities and they have also different names uh, across different countries. Uh, it's already possible to request access on behalf of different companies, but the search needs to be consistent. Now we have introduced the concept of a shopping cart. So you can search, select an organization, go back, search again, add another organization, go back, search again as many times as you want. And the selected organizations will be shown in a tile that is close to the organization search. When you reach the stage of selecting which roles you want to have, then this is where you can remove the organization if you want. So before submitting the request, you are able to amend your choices if you want. But again, as we said, the most important thing is that your organization is registered in OMS. Uh, we are not showing this today, but uh, I hope that you know that if you don't find your organization in EMA account management and in OMS, you can request the organization directly from EMA account management to be registered without the need to go to OMS. And I forgot to say that this is not available yet in production, but will be available on the 3rd of September. Another uh, important integration that we have done with our organization management system is about organization merges and historical record. So a merge of two organizations can happen for several reasons. One of these could be an actual business merge. So a company is acquiring another company. Another reason could be that we have uh, duplicates in our environment and we want to remove them. So that is called a technical merge. But whatever is the reason, if you are a user administrator of one of these companies that have been merged, as soon as the merge is happening, you will receive a notification. And after that, you can go and decide what you want to do. So there is no automated action on EM account management, but as a user administrator or super user, you can use the Manage Access tab to list all the users of your organization and eventually request access to the organization, the surviving organization. When two organizations are merged, what is happening is that only one will remain in OMS and the other one will be made historical. <clears throat> and we still have some EMA systems that will have data linked to an historical record of OMS. So if you want to access this kind of record, so after a merge, you want to access the organization that is being merged and is not available anymore in OMS, then you can use the tick box, include historical record. This will allow you to select all the historical records that are available in OMS. So you can still access all data if you want. But please keep in mind that the organization that is surviving is the one that you would really like to be affiliated to. Another feature that we have introduced 
is the di display of location status. So if an organization is active or inactive. Um, one important concept that I want to pass here is that you, when you request access in EMA account management, access is always requested on behalf of an organization. So even if an organization has multiple locations and you select multiple locations in the form, what is added is always the organization. So we display location data to facilitate the search of the organization that you need. But again, you always request access on behalf of an organization. So if, an, if a location is inactive in OMS, then it will be displayed as grayed out and cannot be selected. Again, if you put the option to include historical record, you will be able also to select a location that is inactive. Still, the request will always be submitted for that specific organization. So location data is available in EMA account management just for uh, searching the related organization. Both the notification organization merges, the possibility to select historical record and the display of location status are all available already in the production environment. The first two are available since January this year and the display of location status is available since yesterday. So let's do the demo now of how to request access. I will jump now to another environment, our dev environment, to show you the organization shopping cart. So as we know, we need to request access for an organization. And let's take a practical example. And we want to search an organization that is in Iceland. And we are really good. We already know the organization ID. We click next and we can already see that this organization has several locations and one of those is inactive, so I cannot really select it. I can still select the other two locations, but as we said, the organization shopping cart is per organization. So only the organization will be added. It doesn't really matter how many times I select location, we only have one organization. Now let's go back and I still need to access one historical record from this organization. So I can click this, include the historical record and then more records will come up. And I can see that we have record uh, from another organization ID and another organization ID and potentially I can select this and the historical record will be added. But actually this company has been acquired by another company that is in the Netherlands and is Teva. So if anyone from Teva is listening, I'm sorry that I pick you as an example, but it was some of the data that we needed. So now I can search again and still the previous selection that I did is available here. And I can select now also the other organization from Teva in the Netherlands. And as soon as I select them, they are appearing here in the organization shopping cart. So let's go ahead and now we need to select the roles. Let's search for Iris. And as we see now we have the list of organizations that are available here. But actually I did a mistake. I didn't want to request this organization so now I can remove it and not even this one, I just need these two. 
So now I can search again for the uh, iris. And I want to be a contributor. Now I will try to go ahead. But wait a second, there is no organization administrator, no user administrator for this company. So the system is telling me that if I go ahead, my request will be rejected. So I need to add also the user administrator. And then for a user administrator, I will need to provide a proof of affiliation. And then I'm able to submit my request. So let's pause here for a moment. And I want to pass you another tip. Um, we have added two organization and two roles. So this is uh, resulting in us requesting four roles. And we see that the roles are waiting on different queues. So two roles, the one for Artavis, are sitting on EMA. So this means that the service desk of EMA is evaluating this request. But these two roles are sitting on the approvers of the, this organization ID, that is Teva. So it means that this, a, a super user, a user administrator is already appointed or Teva, and it's not EMA that would need to approve this request. So again, based on the users that are available for each organization, the system will decide who will be the approver. So in this case, the approval of this request will go into different paths. And now, if you want, we can start answering some questions so that we break a little bit the presentation and the demo. So I will be showing the Slido here. So the first question is if we can terminate another account. Uh, no you can only terminate your own account. Uh, we don't have the concept uh, of terminating another account, only the service desk can do this on your behalf. So for that, you will still need to open a ticket, but we can look into this if, uh, if it is possible. I hear your request. So the question is if it's possible to improve the user nom role name list because we are not consistent uh, with uh, the domain creator. So sometimes we call MAH, that stands for Marketing Authorization Holder. Sometimes we use industry. Sometimes we use competent authorities. Sometimes we use national competent authorities. Sometimes we use NCAs and so on. Uh, I agree we should try to be more consistent and we will try to deal with the different teams. Uh, one point that I have to make is that uh, the marketing authorization holder is a specific status. So you can be an industry and you are still able to submit cases in Iris, but you are still not a marketing authorization holder. And this is why for a QPPV, you have a marketing authorization holder because you need to have an authorized author product to do pharmacovigilance. So there, are, there is reasoning behind this, but I agree that we should try to be more consistent in this. So there is one question, when we will be able to download the list of users with the roles for enhanced user management? Uh, the answer is from now. So. Uh, you can do this at any time. And um, let me uh, go back here and I will go to register.ema.europa.eu. So this is the home page where you can find all the documentation for the platform. 
And if you go under the user administrator guide, uh, you will have, of course, an explanation of what is a user administrator. And you will have also viewed the list of users of your organization. So the manage access file feature will allow you to see all the users for the organization that you manage and you can export them at any time. So this is where you can export the list for the organization that you manage. A another concept that we don't have, because I don't know if the question was related to this, is a sort of domain administrator. So if, let's say, you are the user administrator of Pfizer.com, you want to see all the users that have that specific email domain. That concept doesn't exist in the platform because we always uh, act for roles. So if you are authorized to access on behalf of that organization, then the user administrator can see your assignments. So that is the concept that we are using. Will it be possible at some point to clone a role structure? So we want to have a sort of option to say that a new user should have the same role of another user. Uh, we don't have this feature right now. Uh, we will put this in the backlog of our features. Um, my answer is also that popping profiles from the security perspective is not always good. Uh, probably what we should look into is to have business roles that are grouping the different roles and are more easier to understand from the different stakeholders that are interacting with the platform. So that could be an option and we will look into that as well. But right now we don't have this, this feature. So this question I think is about service provider. So companies that are acting on behalf of several companies because they help them uh, to interact with the EMA. So do we need to terminate the account between the jobs if we are leaving one CRO and going to work for another? The answer is it depends. I'm sorry about that, uh, but it depends if you are working with uh, your CRO account, so your email address is the one of your service provider, of if each company is giving you an email address from their company. So if you have an account that is just accessing that organization, then as soon as you stop working with them, you will need to terminate your account. If instead you have your CRO account and you have different companies that you're working with, then you just need to remove the access for that specific company. And you can retain the access for all the others that you are working with. At the end, it's always the ultimate responsibility of the company that you're working with to make sure that your access is removed when it's not needed anymore. So if you are moving to a new employer, this is one of the case where our recommendation is terminate your account and open a new one. It will be cleaner or your access will be removed. And then you will start a new account with a new email address under the new employer. So this is the answer that we always give when people are leaving the company. So the next question is about relationship between organizations. So, uh, and if we can create a relationship between an ed headquarter, HQ, and all the other organizations that are affiliated to that company. Uh, we discussed this feature internally and we still have, um, don't have a solution for that. Uh, we know that this is an important feature and we are checking with OMS colleagues if a hierarchy or organization 
could be possibly implemented in OMS. But it's something that we have under our radar. Unfortunately, we don't have a solution yet. I will take other two questions and then we will resume the slides. Is it possible or could be possible in the future to export the list of available user roles in EMA account management? Um, this is something that we don't have right now. It is true that uh, you have a table when you reach the stage of your access request when you can select the roles and you can copy that table, but it's not exportable as a CSV or anything. So it's something that we can think about. Uh, and we have also received a request to have a document where we list all the roles available for all the platform, but for us it's difficult because we have several teams working on this and the roles are quite dynamic. So. Under which circumstances will be necessary to link an inactive location? Um, this is a good question. I don't see a real use case. The availability of inactive location is just again to show data that are available in OMS. And the historical records is something different because again, the historical record is not just an inactive location, but is an organization ID that is not available anymore in OMS. So I will resume the slides now, keep asking and uh, putting questions here, and we will have another um, break for Q&A. So let's go to the next set of features that we have introduced. And now we are when we need to access our EMA system. And Let's start with the first item, new systems using modern authentication. So what is modern authentication? Uh, when we are referring to modern authentication, if we want to be really practical, we are referring to the screen on the top right, where you can sign in with your username followed by atid.emma.ropa.u or with your email address. We will focus on the email address in a second. And after that, uh, you are capable of doing multi-factor authentication. Modern authentication, if we want to go on the technical side, relies on modern authentication protocols like uh, uh, SAML or IDC or OUT and can unlock different features. And one of those is multi-factor authentication and single sign-on. Uh, all new systems that the EMA is building are based on modern authentication. Uh, high-risk UPD, EV, CTS, but also new systems that are coming. And we still have some systems that are not capable to interact with this modern authentication, and we are working to migrate them. In the past year, EMA account management was one of the systems that has been migrated to modern authentication, Odralink, Oracle BI, that is behind Avidas and other uh, BI platform, the meeting management system, uh, UDRA CT for clinical trials, uh, UDRA GNDP for inspections. And we are still working on other systems to be migrated, uh, like the interface, the user interface for SPORE related to organization and referentials, the clinical data publication portal CDP, a common repository and PSUR that are accessible only for regulatory authority in the member states, the network training center still only for national competent authorities and APT human. So we are focusing on these systems right now, but we don't have a date yet. So for these systems, if you try to log in, you will see more a screen similar to this one, or we you just have a form for username and password. And for these systems, we don't have single sign-on capabilities and multi-factor authentication yet. And now we mention authentication with the any mail. So as we said at the beginning, we want to make sure that our improvements improve both the usability of the platform and the security of it. 
So we know that when we talk about the systems that are using modern authentication, you still need to have a user ID and a password that are managed by the EMA. So we are storing those credentials. And you need to remember them. So if you forgot them, then you have self-service capability to use the forgot username and forgot password and recover those credentials. But what we want to do is something different. So we want you to really forget about this credential. And the difference will be that you will authenticate with your email address. And then after that, if your organization is using Azure ID, then we will have what is called automated federation. So you will be redirected to the sign-in method that you use with your organization. And potentially, if you have single sign-on, the authentication will be automated. If your organization is not integrated with Azure ID, then you will have what is called the one-time passcode. So it's a number that will be sent to your email address. And with this, we are locking uh, several use cases. And one of those is the use of collaboration tools like Team and SharePoint. Because with those, uh, right now, you need to have uh, two accounts and you need to be switch between these accounts. You need to have incognito windows sometime to access our system. And now you will be able to use the same account that you have in your, in your organization to use these collaboration tools. But how it looks like, and then we will see it also in the demo. So as we said, in this sign-in form, previously you had to insert your user ID with the suffix at id.emma.rob.u. Now you can insert your email address. If your organization is linked to Azure ID, then we will have federation. So you will be redirected to your organization sign-in page. Here we have uh, just an example. And again, the password will not be anymore the password that we manage at EMA, but will be the password that your organization provides you and that you use probably on a daily basis. If your organization is not integrated with Azure ID, then you will receive a code or your email address. So you will see this screen where you need to have entered this code. And after the first login, you will not also need to accept the fact that we need to read some information like the email address, uh, your sign-in name, and uh, uh, also the information on where you are coming from. And why we are doing this? We are doing this because we see a lot of benefits. First of all, from an organization perspective, as soon as a user is leaving that company, then their account is not usable anymore. Because as soon as a user is leaving that company, if the company has a good governance of identities, their account will be disabled and they will not be able to access that email address anymore. On our side, this will allow us to have automatic cleansing because we don't need to be notified anymore when a person is leaving. After that person is leaving, after six months, the account will be disabled due to inactivity. From the user experience perspective, Again, as we said, no need anymore for a username and password that you need to remember. You just need your email address. So on our side, we don't need to help you anymore in recovering those credentials. And then, as we said, there is also seamless integration for collaboration tools. And every time you log in, we are also validating your email address. So we are making sure that the data that we have are valid. Some attention point still. As every change, there are benefits, but there are also attention points or pitfalls. Now, having the correct email address in our system is vital. So if you are changing it, then uh, you need to contact us. Uh, we have two systems, WebEx and Confluence. So if you need to authenticate into those systems, then there is a two-step process. And as we said at the beginning, this is applicable only for systems using modern authentication. So for the systems that are using other protocols, we're still relying on the username and password. We are working to make sure that the list of these systems will become really slim.
And let's see how we transition uh, to this. So last year, in December, we released what we call an opt-in mechanism. So each user can go in the EMA account management system and opt-in to email authentication. And we've seen that we have around 120 users per month that have converted. So now we have over 1,000 and are using all type of EMA applications. What we have discovered with this opt-in mechanism, that group email cannot be converted. So if you have a group email in Office 365, that cannot be used for authentication because it's just a group email address. And as we said, we have systems like WebEx and Conflex where the sign-in will require two steps. So right now, if you are a new user, you can self-register. And then you can authenticate with the user ID with the suffix at id.emma.robo.u. And after that, you can opt in for email authentication. And after that, you will be able to use this feature. But this is really the direction where we want to go. And this is why we want to push users to start using this. So from the 30th of September, all new self-registered users will be automatically set to email authentication. So if you register a new account from the 30th of September, automatically you will be able to log in using your email address. And you will not be able anymore using the user ID with the suffix at id.ema.robo.u. If you are not a new user, then you will be notified. So we will ask you kindly to convert your account. So the first time you will log in to an EMA system, so you will see a pop-up asking you to be converted and you will also receive an email notification. So this will not happen at every login, but we will do it on a monthly basis. So with your account, you can opt in and we have improved the opt-in conversion so that now is more uh, requires less time and provides immediate feedback to the user. But the concept is the same. You have already an email account that has been registered before the 30th of September. So you can opt in to email authentication at your own pace. And what will happen then? Uh, we will have this transition period until January 2025. I don't have a precise date yet. But after that, as we say, if you are a new self-registered user, you already go to email authentication. If you are a user that has been registered before the 30th of September, then we will do the conversion for you. At that point in time, all the users will be authenticating using their email address. So what have we introduced here? We already have the opt-in mechanism, as we said, but we have worked it uh, based on the feedback that we have received. Uh, right now, if you opt into email authentication, it can take up to 30 minutes for your account to be converted. Instead, after the 30th of September, the opt-in will be immediate. So you will, as soon as you will see the confirmation screen, you your account will be converted. So you would receive a live feedback if your account somehow has a problem for email authentication. And as we said, all the other users that already have an account and that will authenticate to EMS systems, the first time they will need to acknowledge that we want them to migrate to the system. And if they don't do it by themselves, in January, we will do it for them. And let's see this now in action. So I will use an account that is not converted yet. And here again, we are using our test system. So we see that the suffix contain the test, but the, this, the concept will be the same in production after the 30th of September. So if you log in 
with the, your user ID, then you will be asked to put your password. And this is the EMA password. And then, as we said, you will be notified that your account is not converted yet. But we want you really to read what we are doing. So you cannot just accept this. You need to expand and read what we are doing. And this is more or less the same content that we have seen. And we are saying that all new self-registered users will be automatically set, that all users not converted will be requested to opt in. So how do you opt in? Ah, there is a set of instruction here. Ah, this is in EMA account management, manage identity, opt in to email authentication. Let's do it. So I go to manage identity, opt in to email authentication. As we said, it's really important that your email address is correct. So if at this point, your email address is not correct. It means that we have a wrong information. Please open a ticket with the service desk and don't go ahead with the conversion because otherwise you will not be able to access your account. So if your email address is correct, and this is the case, then you can tick the user agreement and opt in for the user conversion. So I received the confirmation. And now I have an email on that user account telling me that I need to click a link. Let's do it. So now my account is converted. So what I need to put here is not anymore my user ID, but the email address. We are in the case where this is a Gmail address. So this is not a company that will use Azure ID, but it's a private email address. So the use case that we are looking at now is the code received to the email address. In the other case, you will be redirected to another page. So here we have a code that I just received on my email address and voila. I'm summed in. It's the first time that I sign in, so I need to accept the fact that the EMA will be reading this information because we need to make sure that when you're authenticating, you are doing it in a secure way. And I'm logged in using my email address. After the conversion, I will not be able anymore to use my user ID and password with the modern authentication. But for all the other systems, I will still have to use that. So before going to the Q&A, I just want to give some statistics about the system. So you can see here that we are dealing with more than 12,000 organizations and that we have almost 90,000 users. And for those users, we have more than 1,200,000 assignments in the system. So the system is dealing with a high volume of identities. Uh, ARIS is one of the system that is used the most. And then we have Udra Vigilance Humans for UPD, CTIS, and Udra Vigilance Vet. In terms of requests, the service desk is re uh, receiving 235 requests per month on average. And those are the requests for approve the first user admin or super user of an organization. And the service desk is generally taking one day and a an half for approving this request and seven days for rejecting them. Why? Because if they don't have the documentation that they need, they are pushing the user asking to provide it. And if they don't have it, then they are rejecting the request. Uh, as we said, from EMA account management, you can even request a change request in OMS to register an organization. And we have around 125 per month. If we look, at all the other requests, we have around 3,000 requests per month evaluated by the different user admin of the different organizations. 
And here the median wait is two days. So if you do a request, more or less, you need to wait two days before you get your user administrator to approve your access. And for rejected request is 11 days. So the approval rate is 95% here. Just to recap what we've seen, I will not go through all the items, but the notification of organization merges, the possibility to select historical records, and the location status are all available in the production environment right now. The organization shopping cart is coming on the 30th of September. Self-service account termination is already available in production. The improved opt-in mechanism and the switch to email authentication where you are notified and new self-registered users are set to email authentication are both coming on the 30th of September. You can already opt in, but as we said, it will take a bit before your account is converted and you will not be immediately prompt for error. And now let's go back to Slido to have some more Q&A. The first question is about Iris. Uh, so what is the process to change the contact person? Um, I would redirect you here to the Iris registration guide where you have all the information on how to use the Iris platform. And we have the, in Iris, we have the role of uh, coordinator that can access all the procedure or if you are the manager of a procedure you can edit it so it depends so um, this question is about account termination due to inactivity uh, of course uh, there could be a reason why do you don't use your account. And as you said, you don't have any submission to do. Uh, fair enough. You will receive an email notification. And what you need to do is just log in in any of the MA systems once to make sure that you still need your account. So this is what we require. Of course, we don't require any type of um, activity in the system itself. So no submission, uh, no creation of a new procedure, nothing, just to send in, in any of the EMA system. Do we need to inform our IT colleagues of the change to email authentication? Or is this seamless integration? So we have a, in our website, and let me go uh, again to register. Uh, we have just updated the guidance on how to log in into EMA systems. So in theory, the integration is seamless, but if your organization has several controls on Azure ID and is integrated with Azure ID, it could be that your access is blocked. So you will receive an error like this access is blocked by your organization. In this case, it's not the EMA that is blocking you, but it's your own organization. So if this happened, then you need to contact your IT department because they need to whitelist the EMA uh, to allow your account to interact with the EMA. So yes, it's a good idea to inform your IT department of this change. Is the email login approach only implemented for AMIM? No. So the, the switch to email authentication is impacting all the systems that are using more than our authentication. Uh, CTIS, IRIS, UPD, Eudra Vigilance, UPD, and so on. All the systems are impacted. And as we said, we want 
to move this forward for all the DMA systems. So we are working on the systems that are still requesting you just a username and a password without MFA to convert them to this mechanism. So the other question is when we receive email notification from Iris, where the email contact is coming from? from Iris, from email account management, from Simon. Uh, the answer is from different sources. Uh, and it depends on the notification. So if you have, you can put a contact for a procedure or for a product and that contact will receive notification. But you will also receive notification as a manager or of a case manager of a specific procedure and so on. So the answer is it depends. I will take other two questions and then we'll need to go to the closing of the session. Are the plans to grant the external administrator role all access roles for legal entities that user is external administrator for? Um, I don't know if I am reading this correctly. Uh, but you want something as we discussed before, you want to have a sort of hierarchy of organization when, where you want to manage only from the HQ. If that is the case, as we said, we don't have this concept yet. And the last question for today, and then we'll try to answer the other in writing. Oh, sorry, that one skipped. I don't see Iris and PLM important in the list of modern authentication. Why? Uh, Iris and PLM are already there. So if I did a mistake on the slide, I will correct it. But again, Iris and PLM, they, since day zero, are already using modern authentication. This is why probably you don't see in the list of the recent system that have been converted. So thank you everybody for all the questions and the participation as usual very useful feedback. Um, in Slido, I will now set the pool. I will leave the Slido open if you have further questions and further comments until uh, the end of today. Uh, please, uh, if you can complete the, uh, the survey in Slido so that um, we can get feedback on the webinar itself. So some uh, messages that I want to pass before we close the meeting. Uh, the first one is on the homepage of EMA account management, you have all the guides that can give you information on how the system works, on how we manage systems at the EMA. And also you always have the reference for the service desk. So if you don't find the information that you need, please, uh, use uh, the service desk. And the key takeaways that I want you to take from this webinar is that we are continuously working on modernizing uh, our access management capabilities. And as we said, we want to make it more secure, but also more user friendly. And we are switching to email authentication for this reason. So it's in our vision really to get rid of passwords if we can in the near future. And on top of that, we're still working on improving the way that you can request access to EMA systems. So thank you everybody again for uh, attending this webinar. And uh, as I said, if you want to know more information about the system, please uh, use register.demo.ropa.u. Thank you everybody.